got the GameCube out again, I'm going to give it a fresh battery. Hi, welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps. I've got the GameCube out again, and today we're going to put a new replacement CMOS battery, one of these tabbed CR2032 batteries, inside the console, so it remembers the date and time when I'm doing my game saves. So let's see how this goes. Right, so this is the battery in question. It's slightly different to the one I installed in the Pokemon game cartridge a little while ago, it's a little bit bigger. This is a specific one that's got tabs on it, but instead of sitting flat, these little tabs stick out slightly, so they're through hole tabs. So they're designed to go straight into a PCB and be soldered on the back. I thought I had some of these, but I didn't. <laughs> so I ended up ordering some on eBay, got them from a seller called Crazy Tom, and I would highly recommend. Good price, got two of the batteries, and they came very, very quickly in the post. So highly recommended. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But this is the battery that remembers mainly the time and date. So when it comes to this console here, we've got the slot in the front for the memory cards. Now the memory cards are for storing your game save data. But you've also got the console settings themselves. So when you set this up and you set up for the TV type, the sound type and everything else, that gets saved onto the console, which I think is written like directly to a chip. However, to keep track of the time, you need this battery to be powering very, very low low powering the console in the background to keep track of that time because what I found I'm doing because I've been playing a lot of this Zelda game lately is I put the settings in the console I set it to the date on like 27th of July or whatever it was and then every time I load up the console it thinks that's what time it is it's not tracking so my theory is that the battery that's inside the console at the moment is out of power and needs replacing so that's what we're going to do today in terms of what we're going to need for this the battery is soldered directly to the board so we'll need to desolder and remove the original battery and put this one in so it means we will need a soldering iron you could use a heat gun or you could use a uh, soldering iron and a desoldering pump anything for desoldering desoldering braid or desolder wick would work to an extent but i prefer the solder sucker and i use this engineer sso21 which sort of creates a little vacuum inside there so you put it near where you've melted your solder press the button and it just sucks up the excess solder in addition to that i'm going to use a little bit of flux just to help with the flow of the solder as we go so first i need to open up the console so i will also need my game bit driver again as we've discussed with the gamecube before you can buy a lot of these online but a lot of the time the shaft is a little bit short and on the gamecube itself now once that's removed you'll see that the screws are quite far down like if i put this all the way in was about that far in so you need a decent size for that and with these they're a little bit short see how you go with that and good luck anyway i'll open it all up so that screws out of the way you can just lift the top assembly off and pop that to one side I can move my disc out of the way and it's this part of the console that we're concerned with there's two little clips here on either side they will just pop off there's a ribbon here that you can just carefully lift out and that's the only section that we're bothered with. So we can move the actual GameCube safely out of the way. On the back of this controller assembly is this printed circuit board, which has switches and various bits. I've got a modification I did already with a blue LED. I used a little resistor on there as well. I think it was a 100 ohm resistor with a three millimeter blue LED to get just the right brightness. So you can watch my overhaul of that entire GameCube to see how I did that. But this is our battery sitting here so we need to get the PCB removed from the assembly we need a crosshead screwdriver for that and once those two screws are out then you've got your main board and we can see the battery quite clearly on there so I will remove that so I'll need to melt the solder and try and get rid of as much as that as possible so as I said before you could either blast this with a heat gun and mask off the rest of it or as I'm doing here just use a soldering iron get to a decent angle so that I can move the soldering iron in comfortably and bring the solder sucker in from the other side that's melting need a steady hand for this because it does tend to move away quite easily like that <laughs> but it is working that did remove the bulk of the solder from there that tab's all set uh, this one we'll do next so I'll heat it solder sucker ready and that's got most of that removed and I should be able to just start to remove the battery if it's not coming then there's still a bit of solder in place not quite sure where it's attached I'll remove a little more from there that's dropping out now so if I take that 
out from here. We can take a look and see that that'll just lift out from there. On this side, there's a little tiny bit still attached there. So I should be able, if I get some pressure on the back, should be able to just reheat that and it should just drop out. There we go. So that just lifts out. Uh, it's labeled on here uh, with the positive and negative and I've got my positive that side. So the positive will go that way and the negative into the other one. So that's all set. Now, just before we do anything else, I just checked that this battery is indeed worn out. I've got my multimeter. So that is 3.36 volts, 0.56 volts. So you can see that most of the power has gone from that one. This does indeed need replacing. Again, it's labeled. Make sure you've definitely got the positive going into the hole marked positive. Just slide them through the holes there and just be ready to solder those neatly in place. It will probably help if once they are pushed in, you bend the pins over a little bit like that and that will just stop it from dropping out when you've got it held upside down it'll just keep it a little bit more level okay i didn't mention earlier but you will also of course need some solder and you use the soldering iron as i've shown before in my soldering tutorial you heat the metal so you make sure the pad and the little pin are heated and just melt the solder on um, now that was a bit tricky to get it to go on. I did mention earlier that flux is useful uh, in these situations. So what I'll do is I will prepare this side and we can see a comparison of how easily it goes on. I'll put an extra little bit of solder on that one just for when I do a reflow. So with this, I'll just reflow it. Now it might spatter a bit, so make sure you're either wearing eye protection or you've got your eyes well clear of it. That will flow neatly now. And this one should hopefully solder much more easily flows straight on, attaches to the pin, hole still open a little bit, so just a reflow there. Everything looks fine. Right, so there we go. That's all soldered neatly in place. Um, plenty of solder on there. It's definitely, there's no dry joints. It's stuck to both pins and it's nice and neat on the front. So to get that back together, first we need our front plate on there. So that'll just line up where it needs to go. You've got the text this way up and your LED at the top for where the power LED is, so that's fine. Right, so now we've got our main unit and this will clip on there, but first we've got to get the ribbon in place. Now that's all folded up. You can straighten it out a little bit to get a better grip. And just try and line up. Apply a little pressure as you give it a wiggle and it'll just slot in. Then you get the bottom of the control panel. So if you look here, You've got the little flaps for that. And this section there is where those three tabs need to go in. So they sit in there to line it up. Then you lay it forward and it will automatically just clip onto these two bits. Now, no screwing needed with that. We've just got the top to go on. Carefully slot that in place. If mine looks different to yours, by the way, it'll be because of this modification with the fan that we did last time round. Little bit of feedback on that. It's been amazing since I installed it. 3D printed a bracket for it and put a Noctua fan in place uh, with the hope that it would be a little quieter and it has been. It's been brilliant. So I would definitely recommend that. If you fancy giving it a go, check out my video. I'll try and remember to link it up here, but highly recommended. Not a particularly expensive mod, but makes a huge difference. I never really noticed how loud my GameCube was until I installed the quiet fan and it was a really noticeably quieter experience playing on it. Right, let's get this back together. So that is all done. I'm just going to go and test it by loading up without a game in, set the time and date, switch it off, come back to it in a few minutes, maybe half an hour and see if it's still keeping the right time. So I will let you know how that goes. Right, so I set that about an hour ago, switched off, come back to it, and it is now giving me exactly the right time, and the date is kept there as well. So that has gone according to plan. So not a difficult job, and well worth doing. Definitely helps you keep track of your different game saves, otherwise they'll be all showing up as being saved around the same time. If you do get one of these, it's not just that it's a CR2032 battery. It has to be the tabbed type, 
and it has to be with the soldering pins. There's like three different types that you can get. Ones like this that go on the Game Boy cartridges and sit flat on the surface and they get soldered straight down. This would be no good because you've got the through holes. So you have to make sure you get the ones with the pins. And I will link the ones that I got on eBay um, on my description. Uh, otherwise, you can get just the regular flat coin cell batteries. Do not try soldering wires directly onto those. That is really, really dangerous. Make sure you get the ones pre-prepared with the tabs. As I've said before, if you're going to do a job, do it properly. Um, otherwise, you may as well just not bother. But that was a straightforward mod. It's great. You don't have to delve too far into the GameCube. You literally take the top off the front clips away easily and you can get straight to that soldering board very quickly so it's not too difficult to separate just make sure as i said before that you've got the game bit that's a reasonable length to be able to get inside the gamecube probably opening up the gamecube is going to be the hardest part um but other than that if you give it a go let me know how you get on and um i've got loads of new stuff so i'll hopefully have a load of new videos coming i've got a massive order of things from zed labs just this weekend um so i've got some game boy color mods i've got some game boy mods loads of different things to try out. So I will see you again soon. If you like that, subscribe, please. And uh, leave a like, leave a comment. I would very much appreciate it. And uh, thanks for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye.